All right, this presentation is going to deal with biotic and abiotic factors and how they affect the human body. Now, there are a few different types that we'll talk about, and uh, you'll follow along with your graphic organizer. Make sure you put your GSE on the front, and uh, let's get rolling with this. So let's start with talking about biotic versus abiotic. So we'll start with biotic factors. So what biotic factors are just living things that might affect your body. So biological things that will affect your body. So things like pathogens, you know, germs, bacteria, virus, those kinds of things. And another thing you may not think of is your own body. As your body gets older, you go through changes. Uh, you know, when you're young, you grow and your body definitely uh, is affected by aging. Uh, when you get to be a little older, your body is affected by aging in uh, a less of a positive way than uh, it is when you're young. We'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. And another thing is allergens. Uh, there are lots out there, and I'm sure uh, if you don't have any, you know someone who does, and that's something we'll address as well. Now, abiotic factors are those things that affect your body that are non-living or more of uh, environmental things that might affect your body. You know, things like medical procedures. When you think of medical procedures, uh, generally uh, your body is benefiting from those kinds of things. But uh, things like pollution, those are uh, not quite so much. You don't really benefit, I'm not sure of anyone who actually benefits from uh, air pollution. And chemical things like uh, drugs and alcohol uh, and some other things that we'll talk about as well. They can affect your body in uh, adverse ways as well. So why do people always say, you know, cover your mouth when you cough? Or don't drink out of that same glass as that person. And make sure you wash your hands all the time. Well, it's pretty simple. That's one of the easiest ways to transmit biotic factors from one person to another. So again, pathogens are just those little microscopic organisms generally that uh, will affect your body. So bacteria is a, a very a major player in this uh, arena. You know things like pneumonia. Here's an image of a type of bacteria that will uh, give you pneumonia, and uh, I believe this one will also uh, has something to do with strep throat as well. They seem to go hand in hand. So when you get pneumonia, what ends up happening is the bacteria sort of lives in your lungs and causes your alveoli to fill up with liquid. And uh, if it goes too long, you can end up uh, really having trouble breathing and uh, you could actually die from this because your body wouldn't be able to exchange the carbon dioxide and oxygen that the respiratory system usually does. Tuberculosis is another bacteria that affects your lungs. And Lyme disease. Lyme disease is transmitted from uh, a deer tick. And uh, when the deer tick bites you, it can leave the uh, bacteria in your system. And you can have some really, really adverse effects from that. It gives you high fever, headaches and body aches, and your, your joints will ache. Uh, generally, when people get Lyme disease, you'll see sort of this bullseye mark and that dot in the center is like the epicenter of where the uh, the tick left its mark I guess. So bacteria is a type of path is a good example of a type of pathogen that can uh, give diseases to uh, the human body. Another type of pathogen that uh, can have adverse effects are viruses. Things like the AIDS virus the HIV virus uh, causes your immune system to not function. So nobody really ever dies of AIDS. They end up dying of uh, other things that their body can't fight off because their immune system has been uh, attacked by this virus. Childhood diseases like uh, measles and chicken pox, those are also viruses. And just the common cold and flu. So here's a, a good uh, picture that shows a little uh, something living in that guy's sneeze, and I'm sure you don't want to get it on you. 
Parasites are another type of pathogen. Now parasites generally feed on parts of the body or feed with the body. So things like body lice and tapeworm. Uh, tapeworm is a kind of parasite that it ends up living in your intestines and actually feeding on the food that your body is trying to draw nutrients from. So that, that can uh, really have a bad effect on you. And also malaria, which is one of the most common parasites. Luckily for us, there aren't too many cases of malaria in uh, the northeast of the United States. Uh, generally, if malaria occurs in um, places like South America or Africa and Asia and places like that. So the three types of pathogens were, that were mentioned there were the bacteria, virus, and parasites. Aging is another biotic factor that affects the body. Uh, generally, when you're growing up and as you reach maturity, uh, all of that is, those are great, good changes for you. Uh, but when you start getting a little older, uh, some of the structures in your body begin to change. Things like your hair will start to become gray. Heart disease, where the muscles in the heart will either swell up a little bit or they can actually uh, get weakened and thin out. Osteoporosis is another effect that aging can have on the body where the uh, spongy bone material gets more porous and the bones become more brittle. And also loss of hearing, that's a very common uh, effect of aging on the human body. Allergens are a biotic factor that can affect the body as well. Things like peanuts or seafood. A lot of people now have gluten allergies. So these are all types of foods that can affect the body in a negative way if you have that kind of allergy, if you're allergic to it. And basically what, what's happening there is your body isn't able to uh, process the chemicals in the food and you have a bad reaction to it. Bee stings are another allergen. Uh, we're all allergic to bee stings to one extent or another. Uh, some people will, can... Bee stings are another allergen that can have uh, pretty adverse effects on the body. Uh, so people who are allergic to bee stings have very bad reactions where they swell up and uh, their throat may close up. Usually they'll need to get medical attention immediately to help uh, counteract the effects of the venom in their system. Mold is another big one uh, where things get wet a lot. Uh, mold can be very prevalent and people can have a lot of difficulty breathing uh, because of their allergies to mold and pollen can also affect you in the same type of way. I'm wondering if anyone's ever had this done. This is what's called a scratch test where different types of uh, things that may be allergens are sort of scratched into someone's skin uh, just to see what kind of reaction they have to it. Now based on uh, what the skin does, doctors are able to tell what kind of allergies that person might have. So you can see that this person is allergic to quite a bit of things. Uh, feathers, cats, dogs, horses, sheep. I hope he doesn't live on a farm here. Now abiotic factors that affect us are around us all the time. Our environment is full of abiotic factors that can affect our health. When we think of modern medicine, there are lots of things that uh, affect our body. Now people with cancer may get radiation and the purpose of that radiation is to attack areas in the body that have been affected by cancer cells. But we have to keep in mind that as it's attacking those individual cells, it's also attacking the tissue around it as well. So 
that can have some adverse effects on the person. And chemotherapy is another thing that uh, people with cancer may go through. The purpose for the chemotherapy is again to attack certain cells, but while it's attacking cells, it's doing damage to other parts of the body as well. Another abiotic environmental risk is pollution. When we hear the word pollution, we generally think of air pollution, and that does affect us quite a bit. There are some areas in the country where on uh, really hot days, like in Los Angeles, people have to stay inside for a, a lot of the day just because the air is so bad that they'd rather not be outside in that the toxins that are in the air. One thing we don't often think about is noise pollution. How many of you own an iPod? Well, when you stick those little earbuds in your ear and you turn that thing all the way up, you're affecting your body. Over long periods of time, listening to loud music can really harm your ears. Noise pollution doesn't just come from music. If you think of uh, traffic, people who work with heavy machinery, you'll often see them using uh, ear protection because long-term exposure to loud noises like that can really, really damage your ears. Another abiotic environmental risk can come from chemicals, things like heavy metals. Well, not that heavy metal. But things like lead or cadmium and mercury, these are all metals that are in the environment most of the time because of uh, people using different things. I know lead paint is a, a big issue in this country. In 1978, the country outlawed using lead in paint because they knew that if you ingest lead, it can cause uh, problems with your, uh, your brain. They stopped using it in 1978, and the paint should last about 30 years or so. So that puts us right now, we're right at the time where the lead paint that has been put on uh, has is failing and it's starting to chip off. So, you know, especially we, we have to look out for little kids and make sure that they're not playing around near windowsills or uh, you know picking paint off of walls or the houses and things like that because it can be very dangerous for them. Often industries will have runoff and what I mean by that is they'll process something in inside their factory and they'll have like some sort of waste material that uh, ends up in the environment and that will often have high levels of mercury and things like that and as it rains that water will run off into rivers and then into the oceans and it poisons the fish in the oceans and then we eat the fish and it can cause uh, long again long-term exposure to things like this can cause problems for us later on asbestos is another building material that was very popular back in uh, in the fifties and sixties and seventies uh, that can do some serious damage Here's a, an image of a, a roof that was made with asbestos, and uh, it, it's a very durable material, but unfortunately, it's also very, very hazardous. Uh, asbestos is made up of these tiny little fibers. You can see this in this image. They look very sharp, and they are. So if you work with asbestos, you would be breathing in asbestos dust, which is basically these fine little sharp particles. And what it would do would cause little cuts in your uh, trachea, and in your bronchi and in your lungs that would uh, eventually could cause things like lung cancer. There are other risks out there too and we can't really get away from them, things like sunlight. I know in the summer we all like to go outside and sit by the pool or go to the beach but you've really got to be careful and you've got to put on sunscreen because the sun gives off more than just visible light. It gives off all kinds of radiation and uh, UV rays can be very damaging to the skin and later on we'll work on a short little project where we'll investigate exactly what skin cancer is and uh, different ways of uh, protecting yourself against it. Other abiotic things that may affect your health are things like drugs and alcohol. Uh, Overconsumption of alcohol can really lead to serious problems later in life uh, with your liver, things like that. Uh, tobacco, I'm sure we all know the dangers of that. Um, uh, smoking tobacco can cause 
serious lung problems like cancer. What people don't really think about often is uh, chewing tobacco. Uh, if you go online and look up pictures of people's mouths that have uh, chewed tobacco for long periods of time, they it's uh, pretty gross. So check that out if you're interested. Don't try it yourself. Just check out the pictures. I'm telling you. It's gross. Illegal drugs can also have some adverse effects on the body. I'm sure uh, your health classes have talked about that. And prescription drugs, things like over-the-counter drugs, can have effects on your body as well. Um, generally, uh, if it's a drug that's prescribed by your doctor, it's going to help you. But if these substances aren't taken the way they're supposed to be, uh, it can really have, make you sick and have some adverse effects on your body. And another thing that fits into this category, and I'm not quite sure if we can think of it as abiotic, are herbal medicines, because these are actually, I guess you're ingesting uh, biotic things, living things that once were living, but as you put them in your body, I suppose they're not living anymore. But there are uh, studies out there that show that uh, herbal medicines can have some positive effects on the body. So what does this mean to you? What I want you to do is I want you to think about what we've talked about here, and I want you to look around. Look around Parkview and see what you can see. What kind of biotic factors might there be? What kind of abiotic factors might be here affecting your body? So in your graphic organizer, you've got this table, and I want you to find three in the school 